looks like it's on record here. Okay. So here we go. Um, can you guys see my screen? The sign? Yes. Yep. Okay. So the little background to this before I, I proceed with sign is um, we actually been having voltage issues on our feeders and every month we look at the AMI real time data um, showing the voltages for every 15 minutes at the customer location. So any voltage that is out of range, um, the range is um, plus or minus 5%. So if it's on the high side, we classify it as high voltage. If it's on the low side, it's classified as low voltage. So if this happens for consecutive two hours on a customer uh, meter, it's going to flag it as an abnormal voltage. So these are aggregated down to so the feeder level. And we oftentimes send these, these feeders to the region to to remediate the, the abnormal conditions. So we came with this batch analysis, uh, which I will try to create a new study. So the batch analysis talks about the, the way we can, just like the name batch means we can actually look at feeders in batches, in, in batch. So we can look at it all together in a lump sum and determine the voltage conditions of the system. So as a follow up to this meeting later on, I'll be setting up a meeting on, on how we intend to implement this on our system. So the batch analysis allows you to, to do this on the model. This batch analysis uh, allows you to pick feeders and run them and determine their voltages. So basically, we intend um, to do this like every quarter or maybe by annual and determine the worst feeders on the system. So when um, so let's go through sign right now and see how we can quickly run uh, batch analysis. So I will normally run the batch analysis for for minimum load, uh, basically the absolute minimum load or the peak. Um, the peak season. So when we run it for the minimum load, uh, we are interested in the high voltage feeders. We are very much interested in the high voltage. I uh, think that's uh, pretty much clear. And we we'll try to run the, so in the parameters tab, everything looks, um, you uh, leave it in the default. Uh, you have a load flow, the analysis scope is run scenario on networks in database, except you want to look at self-contained files. But now we are looking at the database. Then you come to the networks tab and you pick the network. Um, let me see. So in here, you see we have the Lehigh, Northeast, Susquehanna, Harrisburg, and Lancaster region. So you can easily pick all the entire regions, all the regions and run it. Uh, as well, you can pick only one region uh, and run. So the goal is actually to, to get the worst voltage for the entire system. It's not uh, based on region, uh, but for this, um, for this, uh, training, I will only look at a few feeders as an example. So let's pick these um, six feeders in Lancaster region and try to see uh, what's happening there. And the outputs are the outputs. Uh, everything looks uh, pretty much the same on the default. Then we run these for the six feeders. Uh, 
So wait why this loads the six feeders and runs. So this is how it's going to be really, really slow if you are running it for the entire about 1800 feeders on our system. So sometimes I always recommend um, doing it by region. So we have six regions, so you have to do it like six times. So I think that's that's better. Yeah, and we have the result um, being displayed below. So you come down at the results tab. The second tab is uh, the result we're actually interested in. And if I shift this up, um, so these are the six feeder, the keys, the networks, the over voltage, under voltage counts, highest voltage, and the location, the lowest voltage and the location. So basically what this means is, um, since we are dealing with a minimum load sector day, we're going to be interested only in the high voltage. So in most cases, I will normally want to export this to Excel. So I'm going to share the Excel report. So this Excel report, we are interested in the high voltage so we can delete the under voltage count. So delete the, these two. So um, over voltage count is zeros. Um, what this means is there's no node on the feeder where there was an over voltage on that particular day at that time so which means that's great and the highest voltage on the highest voltage in percent the highest we have here um, even if you sort these uh, we always like want to sort from the highest to the smallest so the highest voltage we have is 103.5 on this feeder so the and the location of the highest voltage is this. So we can always go to the location. In most cases, the the highest voltage is always at the source. So that's not unexpected uh, in most situations. So in this scenario, um, this can be regarded as the the feeder to consider. However, this just a case study. You know, when, by the time you run the entire feeders for the entire system, you are going to have some voltage counts, which is great gives you like how much of, of uh, nodes are there over voltages and what's the extent of the over voltage at the worst location. So what's the extent? So these these are two, but well, going by these, uh, I would just like to ask which of these parameters do you guys think is the best to, to rank the, the high voltage feeders? Is it by the over voltage count or the percent of the severity of the, the voltage deviation. Like just any anything, just a thought, because I actually have been using a different uh, rule to rank the worst voltage feeders. Let's say this is highest voltage feeder and the over voltage count is three nodes. And this is very perfect, 100%, no deviation. The highest is uh, five. We look at a range outside of uh, 5%. So we are looking at 105% and above, or at least for the high voltage. And this has a voltage count. Uh, 
So basically, uh, let me tweak this because this is not an over voltage. These are 107. And, and this is say 105. And the over voltage count is 15. So I'm um, asking um, a question. Is it this feeder here and this feeder? Which one can we regard as the, the feeder with the worst voltage situation? Any idea? The, the one with the higher over voltage count. What do you guys think? Any other impute? I, I think, agree with the I think if you multiply the over voltage count by the amount of over voltage, like the value of amount of over voltage in volts, mm -hmm. that would be like a good criteria to compare them. Mm. Something sounds, like scale. Like, wow, that sounds really great. So since this is, is still um, something in process, thank you guys for the, for the contribution. They are both wonderful. Yeah, um, yeah you, you could like say the over voltage count, like, Afan said, yeah, the over voltage calculator because I may not want to worry so much, 107, um, then three, you know, mostly if the location is at the source, kind of, you know, but we don't want it to be above 105. Above 105 is definitely, or at 105, let's say it is 106, is definitely an anomaly. So we, it's it's very tempting to want to use the over voltage counts. It's also very tempting to want to use the severity. Like if it's only one node that is going through the, the highly severe voltage, I don't want to really say it's the worst voltage feeder, possibly, because it's not distributed over the, the entire customers. So like, um, uh, Payam said, I think a, a weighing factor would be very, very great. Having a column that actually weighs the contribution of these two columns would be really, really great. So it could be a product of these two, like he said, or a product of the count and the deviation and the delta. So you can have the count multiplied by, by the delta. How severe it is away from 100. So the delta here is 7%. So it could be a product of the count and seven and a product of 15 and six, I think would be um, a criteria to weigh these. And um, we could look at these in the near future going forward as a criteria. So basically, um, I've been using some kind of judgment and this kind of situation I've used, I think I've used more like the over voltage count. Like I found said I've in my recent uh, studies, I've used over voltage count and I've actually ranked this column from the highest to the smallest. And um, and I'll be saying, okay, this is the, the worst uh, feeder. Because that's well distributed. I'm going by the weight, it could as well be, you know, all based on well, what this column is able to compute. So this looks great. And sometimes we want to rank the entire, we have a thousands of, close to 2,000 feeders. So we want to rank like the entire, the, the first uh, was voltage feeders on the circuit. The, 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 the worst voltage feeders we have on the circuit, we are really, so it doesn't uh, have to be, it doesn't have to be um, high voltage, equal to the worst, it could be, all the worst could be low voltage feeders, all the worst could be high voltage feeders. So um, I'm going to go back to sign. And I'll stop, I'll share something, share sign. 
Well, fortunately, we have more low voltage feeders than high voltage feeders, as expected. Or not expected, but that's what we see. So uh, basically, I uh, would want to try uh, one more, or like a, a, a final example. It's that's just about all. About all about batch analysis. Uh, great thing we are. We can use a flexible load model as well, and. Your results can be compared with AMI data to, to validate what you are getting. And I'm sorry, just one more thing before you run batch analysis, I actually skipped that, is to turn off all generators. I think, um, luckily enough, we, let's see, we don't have generators in here. Your ECGs, oops. So um, these are the entire generators you have on the system. OK, so we don't have generators here. So please turn off all generators, synchronous generators, induction generators, every type of generators on the system, inverter based. Um, you guys have an idea why we should turn off generators to run the study in order to have accurate results. Like any idea, you have to turn off all the generators. And I think we, we do know how to turn off generators. And why? Why should we turn off all the generators before running this study? OK, um, this is just similar to what we do during load flow studies turning off all the generators because you will be double counting. So most of the loads that are modeled at the, the, the load buses, the nodes are already maxed. So the generators are already maxed with the load. They've already been like net metered. So turning on the generators for this study will mean double counting uh, the generation. So it's better to, to turn it off and leave the system as it is or just like what we, we actually had happened so that's the reason you have to turn off generators because if you leave the generators on you're going to have bad results uh, it's going to contribute to to the voltage as uh, as expected so we'll, we'll run these again um we run and wait for the six feeders so when we run for the peak seasons, just like the summer peak here or the winter peak, they are interested in low voltages. Low voltages. So we're going to wait for this to, to load the feeders in. So slow. Okay. Here we have and On the load flow summary, so we have this result. Can I export this Excel and you can I think you can sort these as well. So we are interested in just the, the low voltage, zero low voltage voltage count. This seems to be a real good feeders 
And even the low voltage, the lowest uh, we could see here is 96.2, which is still within range. So we don't want to like care much about these feeders. This looks like perfect feeders. Like 96.2 is the lowest voltage. And this is the location of the lowest voltage. You can actually click this and go to the lowest location or investigate further on the feeder. And that's all. That's all about, about batch analysis. The only difference is we have made use of six feeders here. Meanwhile, we, we are interested in the entire feeder for, for the whole system. Are there any questions, comments, contributions? How does this uh, look? Um, what's the challenge? Is it is it promising? Is it like a great uh, model to to assist us in in planning our systems? Like, because um, these feeders are going to be ranked based on severity of of voltage anomaly, and those feeders will be sent to the region to take proper action. So, what do you guys think? I mean, is there a way we can get customer count? Hmm. Like based on the nodes that Syme identifies? Unfortunately, uh, uh, in the studies I did, where it identifies certain certain nodes, like let's say two or three, um, I couldn't reach those nodes. So actually, I didn't, that, that's a great question. So that's a limitation to this. So it's great identifying these so we, we know what limit limitations we have so yeah so we couldn't identify the exact nodes where those those voltage problems are it's 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 a, it's a challenge yeah thanks for bringing that up um so yeah it's something we could um even sign is interested in quality assurance and the kind of needs and input from us, it's kind of uh, one of those things we could, we could send to them. Any other comments, um, suggestions, you know? Um, is it too slow or too fast? Or, I mean, with the program, is it so fast? Is it practical enough doing this for, for the entire system? Anything? Okay, so I'll take that um, that everything is all clear. So these all we have on voltage batch analysis. I hope it's it helps us all. And um, uh, in the coming days, we'll be having a meeting uh, with all planners on how we intend to to go about these and actually use it to solve problem um, voltage problems on our system. Thank you all for for attending this uh, training. I appreciate you guys. You enjoy your day and have a great weekend. Thanks, Femi. Thank you. Thank you, Femi. Thanks, Femi. Thank you.